Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and uh, before we get into the, our, our main topic of neural networks, I first want to talk a little bit about where they come from. And in particular, we're just going to kind, in, in this video, I just want to uh, very briefly just go over uh, the kind of the inspiration for uh, neurons and uh, this this neural this topic of neural networks because they haven't been this is not a new topic neural networks they've been around for decades and even some of the more advanced uh, techniques like convolutional neural networks have still been around for decades but you know with with advancements in uh, research for having bigger and deeper neural networks then that's kind of started to um you know bring these back uh, into focus that along with gpus being great for these computationally computationally intensive tasks uh, and, and a bunch of other factors have sort of brought them up to the forefront and you, know, you read them you read all about this um these advancements in ai and everyone's starting to use ai now and uh you know so i just want to talk a little bit about where the inspiration for neural networks comes from because it's actually fairly natural uh, in fact it comes from our own brains and so i just want to talk a little bit about how biological neurons work in your brain and then we can actually you can see that we can take that model that, that biological model and actually formalize it into a mathematical model and then when we have that mathematical model then we can start saying well okay i have one neuron what happens when i have four of them and what happens if i layer them right and then that kind of helps build up from uh just a single neuron over to a full uh deep neural network and so that's kind of where i'm going to be starting at just from uh just from a single neuron we'll start talk a little bit about that then we'll maybe use two neurons and have like a little tiny neural network and then we'll see what happens when we expand them out but anyway biological neurons so I'm going to try to draw, you know, that came out kind of weird, but suppose this is your brain, right? Not a very good picture, but uh, I guess it serves a purpose. So suppose this is, you know, your brain here, right? And so what we know is that at this point in time, the, there are like different regions of your brain that correspond to, you know, different tasks. Like, for example, I happen to know that the uh, occipital lobe is kind of towards the back of, of the brain and the occipital lobe deals with things um, like vision based tasks like dealing with visual cues and, and stuff like that so a lot of the vision stuff that you see um, you know and how you can make sense of what you see happens kind of towards the back of um, toward towards the back of your brain so let me take you know and there are like all sorts of different regions and they can change, and there's like all this neuroscience behind this, but I'm not going to talk about that. But let's kind of zoom in here. So suppose I just zoom into this, you know, and then let's kind of make a bigger picture. Okay, so suppose I zoom into just one particular uh, portion. You would see that the, the brain is actually composed of these things called neurons, and they have a kind of this nice structure in the sense that uh, they they're just a cell in your body like any other cell and and just like any other cell they have a nucleus so here is the here is the uh, nucleus of your neuron and the nucleus you know the cell does all sorts of different functions it pretty much is like the little mini brain of of the cell it just has a lot of the uh, information it has the, the purpose of the cell and how it's supposed to carry out its tasks and you know, dna and all sorts of other stuff but anyway that's not particularly what we want uh you know, particularly what we're interested in is let's first get the definition of a neuron and then see if we can model it mathematically so there are kind of two big portions of of these neurons and that is, they are they're called the, the, the dendrites and the axon and so let's suppose that my dendrites are over on this side and then my axon is over on this side so the dendrites are like little uh, let me see if I can draw a few of them here so they're kind of like uh, little connections here and, and they actually go to other 
they go to uh, you know other uh, neurons. So these dendrites are actually incoming kind of connections from other neurons. So if I can kind of draw a few here. I'll just kind of stop right there. Okay, so these are, are the dendrites. Let me actually do this in a different color. So these are the uh, the dendrites, basically. So dendrites. And they're kind of like incoming connections from another neuron. Because all these neurons are kind of interconnected. And so these dendrites are... You know, if there was another neuron up here, it would be connected to this through through the dendrites. And so what this neuron does uh, is it takes the information that it gets from these dendrites and then does some kind of task and then produces an output. And so that output is called the axon. And so I can kind of continue this drawing here. And you produce a single output here, but the output may go into you know, different neurons. So here is the axon. And so the axon is just kind of a single output of the uh, of the biological neuron. And so then this becomes so then this goes to other neurons. So other neurons. So then you know this output goes out to other neurons and this is from this would be two other neurons, this is from other neurons this way. And so each one of these biological neurons are connected through to, you know, they're connected to each other in complicated ways that we're not, we don't fully understand uh, yet. But, you know, these dendrites are connections from other neurons and the axon produces uh, a single output that goes to, you know, you know other neurons. And you know you can see that this is kind of like the single, the singular building block of our brain. So we can take these neurons, these biological neurons, and kind of stack them, you know, together. And so maybe I make a copy of this, put it over here, and then it becomes the, these connections map up to these dendrites, and you know I can stack them in all sorts of, organize them in all sorts of different ways, and you know I get a brain, or I get a portion of the brain, and then I connect those portions of the brain with using other neurons to other portions of the brain and then you keep doing that until you get a fully functioning brain. So these are kind of like the building blocks. Uh, there's kind of one question that we have to um, address is that when you take the information from the dendrites, what, what does it actually do with that information? And so that's where we kind of get into uh, what's called the firing rate I guess, of the neuron or, or also called the activation of the neuron is that it takes these inputs and if it performs some operation on them, and it only fires, fires meaning that it, you know, produces you know a particular output. It produces an output based on these inputs, and you know it it performs some operation based on each single input that it gets, and then it must look at you know all of the neurons that it gets kind of as a whole, and then produces it produces some output, and that's not still. I mean, there's lots of stuff going on. And so, so don't think that neural networks are actually a representation of this, because the brain is far more complicated than any of our uh, existing models of, uh, of of neural networks. But it's mathematically fairly reasonable, uh, and especially when you discuss things like convolutional networks, you can actually see you can see the superposition of the activation layers for the convolutional networks, and then the activation layers for the occipital lobe. And when you look at them, they actually look pretty similar. So it kind of means that we're on the right track. But uh, anyway, this it, it, this is really all we need. And this is kind of the singular building block of, of neural networks. And we're going to see that this is enough that we can model this mathematically um, into something that we call a perceptron. And you're, you're going to see what happens when we can stack these perceptrons together. Then we get what's called a multilayer perceptron, or MLP. And so these are just kind of the singular... Uh, building blocks of, of our brain, and we're going to formalize them into a mathematical definition so we can use them as a singular building block for, all neural net, for our neural networks. Okay, so this part I'm going to uh, stop right here, and I'll just do a quick recap. So in this video we discussed kind of the biological inspiration for 
uh, neurons and neural networks. So we, our brain is kind of split up into different portions, and it's composed of these building blocks uh, that we call neurons. And they kind of have three big portions. They have the um, three big parts. There's the dendrites, which are the uh, inputs to this neuron, quote-unquote inputs. And uh, there's the nucleus, which actually does some of the processing with, takes the inputs of the dendrites, does some kind of processing task, and then produces an output, and that output, output travels along the axon. And the axon is, then goes as the input to other neurons, and you get this kind of cycle over and over again. So these are kind of the fundamental building blocks um, of, of our brain, and we're going to model these uh, mathematically so that we can use them as the fundamental building blocks for our neural networks.